Another edition of Grok Talk, brought to you by New Hampshire's leading conservative blog site, GraniteGrok.com. We are your feared extremist, right-wing, hard-charging, gun-toting, opinionated, outspoken, rabble-rousing, letter-writing, radio, microphone-stomping, conservatives, and rational libertarians. So get ready for more news and opinion you could only get from GraniteGrok.com. Grok Talk. All right, we're back. Grok Talk, Steve McDonald, Mike Rogers, Skip Murphy, Max Abramson's with us. And we have on the phone with us... It's my pleasure, thanks. Hey, how you doing? Carly, welcome to the show. Thank you, Steve. How are you doing? <laughs> good, good to have you here. Um, we only have a short segment, so I'm going to avoid all that segue intro stuff we usually do and get right to the questions. I, uh, I had asked a couple people if they wanted me to ask you anything specific, and the question that came up most frequently was Common Core. People wanted to know what your stand was on that. Well, I think it's a bad idea. <laughs> I think it's a bad idea because we've pretty conclusively demonstrated that the Department of Education getting bigger and bigger is not helping the quality of our education. I mean, the Department of Education has been costing us more money for decades, and the quality of our education continues to deteriorate. There are people who will say that Common Core is just a set of standards. It's not tended to be a heavy-handed bureaucratic program, but federal bureaucracies only know one way. It's called heavy-handed. And once you have a national set of standards, then you have a national push to test to the standards, to teach to the standards. And of course, behind the Common Core standards are a set of companies who tend and stand to benefit from those standards. They're testing companies, they're textbook companies. So I think it's a really bad idea. We need to return to what we know is most important in a child's education and involve parents and a good teacher, which means we have to give parents as many choices as possible. We need to make sure that teachers are held accountable. You know, one of the things that New Hampshire has done that I think is really smart is give people an education tax exemption and it includes every form of educational option, including homeschooling. That's the way to do it. Give parents a choice hold teachers accountable, and push um, the involvement in education to as close to the local level as possible. This is Skip, and I want to say thanks for coming on as well, Carly. Um, We are very constitutionally oriented here at Granite Rock, uh, but I think this is a question I can ask you that I can't ask most of of your presumed uh, opponents in the Republican primary here. You ran a large organization, $90 billion at at uh, when you left uh, HP. So you're quite well versed in how bureaucracies, whether they be public or private, tend to grow. That's what bureaucracies do. And they issue all kinds of rules and statutes and all of that stuff. My question for you is one of the big bugaboos that conservatives have is that we are basically moving at a very rapid rate from where our elected representatives legislate the laws to one where most laws are being written by the administrators in the executive branch. What is your stance on that? And do you, and depending on what your answer is, what is your remedy if you were well, elected first, president? Yeah, well, first, I think you're absolutely right. Bureaucracies naturally grow bigger. <laughs> Bureaucracies also turn in on themselves. They forget who they are there to serve. And so, you know, you have a Veterans Administration, a giant bureaucracy, where veterans have to fill out paperwork and bureaucrats check paperwork and then bureaucrats to decide if a veteran gets an appointment or not. It's a giant bureaucracy, and it for, has forgotten who it's there to serve. Um, one of the things that, by the way, we have a lot of managers in the political class who are working within that system. And in addition to working within that system, they also are being influenced by people who stand to gain from that system. And the people who stand to gain from big, bureaucratic, complicated government are big, powerful companies. And so, you know, you see Obamacare that is uh, written by drug companies and health insurance companies. You see Dodd-Frank written by a lot of the big Wall Street banks. And now we've destroyed 3,000 community banks. So it just creates a huge problem of ever-growing bureaucracy, crony capitalism, 
more and more complexity and corruption. And therefore, the small, the powerless, the weak are getting crushed, and you see that in the data. So one of the things that I think has to happen is we have to elect leaders in the White House who are prepared to change the order of things for the better, are prepared to actually challenge the system because they haven't lived in it their entire political lives. But I also think we need to engage citizenry like never before. So what does that mean? I think first we go to zero-based budgeting so that we literally know where every single dollar is being spent. We don't know, and we don't argue over the trillions of dollars being spent. We just argue once a year over the rate of increase of one government agency or another. Second, we begin repealing massive pieces of legislation because we have to reduce complexity. We have to repeal a whole set of things. Third, we have to engage citizens. Technology allows us to do this. One of the other things I think we have to do is go to a pay-for-performance system. I mean, literally, we have an IG report every three months that tells us you can watch pornography all day long as a federal government employee and earn the same pay, pension, and benefits as somebody who's trying to do a good job. That's outrageous. It's outrageous. Carly, let so me... We have to, go ahead. I'm sorry. I want to see if I can pinpoint this. With Obamacare, we saw just... Hundreds of times when the legislation said the Secretary of Health and Human Services shall determine That's this right. and shall determine this, would you, if you were to run and if you were elected, would you tell Congress, you need to do the job instead of passing it off to us? I will veto this legislation because you're not doing the hard work of making all the hard decisions. I'm supposed to execute the law, not make the law. Would you would you be in a position or of a state of mind to actually tell Congress by vetoing, go back and do your job right? I absolutely would, but I would add to it. I would also require Congress to post every proposed piece of legislation. I would require every agency to post every proposed piece of regulation on the Internet for absolutely everyone to see. I would require them to leave it there for a reasonable comment period. I would draw citizens' attention to it, and I would ask them to vote on it. Do you think this is a good idea or not? Technology permits people to vote for American Idol once a week. We can (laughs) put technology in people's hands so that they can vote on proposed legislation and regulation. Yeah, the problem is is people tend to watch American Idol and not watch the legislation, unfortunately. Well, maybe it's because they think it doesn't their vote doesn't matter. You know, there are a bunch That's of people disengaged from the political process, not because they don't care, but because they look at what's gone on over years and years and years and they say, you know what, it never changes. It doesn't matter what I do. People forget the Tea Party was formed under President George W. Bush, not under President Barack Obama. Good. So, so, uh, Carly, this is Mike. Um, I, I greatly appreciate your thoughts about cutting down the bureaucracy and making Congress do the work that they're supposed to do, which, by the way, is one of my main uh, preferences. But you've led a large company with a large bu- bureaucracy, and uh, it's always, as you say, tricky to get the bu- bureaucracy to shrink. And at the end of the day, it's about customer service. Uh, unlike the VA, if, say, Hewlett-Packard isn't nimble, uh, the customers will go buy their printers or computers somewhere else. So uh, have you actually cut a bureaucracy, and how, uh, you know, and, and do you have the experience that you can bring to the White House to make that happen? Well, yes, I have. I've cut many bureaucracies, and you're absolutely right. The first thing you need to do to actually transform and cut a bureaucracy down to size is know where you're spending money. And that's why zero-based budgeting is so important. We need to know where our money is being spent. Secondly, you need to tackle the known places where there exists fraud, waste, abuse, and corruption. Every single year, there is a, a report issued in excruciating detail of hundreds upon hundreds of billions of dollars of wasted money, and no one does any thing about it. We know where this is. We just don't do anything about it. Third, you have to engage the people who are supposed to be served. So, you know, one of the things that I did early on in Hewlett Packard is I went and talked to customers and customer service people. And the interesting thing is people who are at the tip of the spear, you know, customers who are being served or those people trying to serve them, they know what's wrong. They know what's wrong. They're just never asked. 
So, you know, I've talked about the VA. You know what I would do? In addition to making sure that all senior executive uh, servants could be fired if they weren't doing the job, not just the top 400 in the VA, I would ask 10 veterans of about 25 years of age, tell us how you want to be served. Give us the blueprint for how we deliver services to you. And that would give us a destination towards which to move a bureaucracy. Uh, and that's, that's wonderful. Thank you for being on the show. This is uh, Representative Max Abramson. Uh, how are you, sir? Doing very well this morning. Beautiful weather. Finally, we're getting spring weather. Um, I have There are two issues in my district, Hampton Falls and Seabrook. We're down on the seacoast. There are two issues in my district that I hear about over and over and over again. One, of course, is Common Core, which you mentioned. The other is Obamacare. How would you convince undecided independent voters of the need to repeal Obamacare? Well, I think first we have to recognize that Obamacare was sold to the American people on a false premise. The false premise, for example, was that you can't get insurance coverage if you have a pre-existing condition. And in New Hampshire, just as an example, high-risk pools exist where people can, in fact, be covered if they have a pre-existing condition. I know how important that is. I'm a cancer survivor. So this problem has been solved at the state level in many, many states, in New Hampshire and California and many others. Secondly, the legislation itself, Obamacare, is longer than a Harry Potter novel. (laughs) And it's not nearly as interesting, so nobody read it. And in addition to that Harry Potter novel, there are now 30,000-plus pages of accompanying regulation. In other words, this thing is so complicated, nobody understands it. And so the reality of that is that hospitals are consolidating to deal with it, insurance companies are consolidating to deal with it, and by the way, the dirty little secret of Obamacare is that insurance companies and drug companies help to write it. It's called crony capitalism. And And so we have to repeal this thing. They did, but it still came back to bite them because they got cheated. Well, that's right. Well, that's right. Everybody got cheated, but most importantly, the American people got cheated. And so we have to repeal it because you can't tinker around the edges of that much complexity. We need to make sure that people are covered with pre-existing conditions. That's been done successfully at the state level. We need to be sure that people have access to quality, affordable health care. And of course, in New Hampshire, Obamacare has taken away access for so many people to their doctors and their hospitals. And finally, I think in the health insurance market, we should try the one thing we have never tried. We've never tried real competition where companies have to serve customers because the health insurance market for 100 years has been a regulated industry where health insurance companies and regulators get together and decide on the rules of the road. Customers are best served when people actually have to compete for their business. Carla, uh, we're running to the end of the segment here. Um, I want to first invite you back uh, because we'd love to have you in the studio or even get you on the phone for a longer segment in the future if, if we can do that. Uh, well, that'd be fantastic. Thank you. Uh, my closing question is um, what would your advice be, whether it's you or somebody else, to uh, the Republicans and the Republican Party on how to compete and win the next presidential election? Well, I will just say I think you have to know who we're up against. And we're up against Hillary Clinton. We must beat her. Hillary Clinton desperately wants to talk about becoming the first woman president. Hillary Clinton desperately wants to talk about the war on women. Hillary Clinton desperately does not want to talk about her track record, her accomplishments or lack thereof, her lack of candor and transparency over Benghazi or email gate or all the rest. If she faces me, On a general election stage, she cannot talk about becoming the first woman president. She can't talk about the war on women. She will be forced to play on the ground of her accomplishments, her track record, her capability and character for leadership. And on that ground, I will win. All right. Well, thank you very much for taking time to talk to us. Um, We will reach out to different individuals to uh, try to arrange that next interview. Thank you so much. It's great to be with you, gentlemen. All right. You have a great weekend. All righty. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. That was Carly Fiorina. We are going to take a very short break, and we will be right back to continue the discussion on Grok Talk. 
This is the Coalition of New Hampshire Taxpayers. We're located at 8 North Main in Concord, New Hampshire. This is a repository for all things conservative and municipal. So if you have a problem in your town, your school, your budget committee, the right to know law, and now at the top of our list is voter fraud. you have a tip for us, some information for us, you want to join or help us out, cnht.org. 